Hello, and welcome to Here's the Thing with Robbie and Jose, where we explore relationships through a male and female perspective. With me, as always, is the lovely Robbie. I fool. <laughs> So am I. <laughs> for the listeners, we just finished raising canes and oh, glazed yeah. donuts. <laughs> and for people that don't have raising canes in their area, I feel bad for you right now. I found out My today sympathy. that you didn't really care for the sauce, which I thought was really crazy because I'm telling you, people will go there mainly for the sauce. Yeah, it's not bad. And every now and again, I'll get a hankering for it if I want something. For the sauce or for? No, for the, well, for both. But okay. the, sauce, the sauce in particular because it's, uh, it's zesty. Yeah, it tastes so. good on the fries and on the bread. Yeah. But every, but most of the time when I eat raising canes chicken, I eat it dry just by itself. Oh, okay. It's yeah. pretty flavorful though. Yeah. I can see that. Oh yeah. But yeah, yeah I feel. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, <laughs> and I'm still gonna munch on it a little bit, not not during the show, but <laughs> yeah, no eating on the show. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Um, but today we are um, continuing our series on the five love languages. Right. Yes. Um, so yeah. So you you. Um, so this time I, I did a little research on uh, physical touch. Mm. Let's yeah. get physical. Physical. <laughs> Can I just say a side note? I sure. realized that I do sing almost in like every episode. Like I do a little, which is strange because I don't think I ever did that before. If I'm wrong, you tell me. I don't know. But I'm like every uh, episode feels like I got to do a little singing. I'm used to it just because you do it and you're talking. Just oh, I we, do? Yeah, whenever we oh. talk, you do that. You break into song. <laughs> that's. I feel like that's a new trait at some point. Nope. It's you're just not. noticing it for yourself. <laughs> you, can, was... <laughs> you can talk to all your other friends and family and ask them, like, hmm, do I do that? Because self-awareness is Yeah, fantastic. I guess that's the one thing about podcasting. It's like you start to realize, like, that's how I sound or that's what I do mm-hmm. and, like... It really it uh, it'll fine tune your 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 listening skills and um, how you articulate yourself. I can't too. believe I've always done that. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I make noises and whenever I tell what stories, kind of noises? you know, like I, like a typical guy. You uh-huh. know, if I'm like there was a car went by, <laughs> <laughs> that's a everybody knows that sound. And when a guy does that, it's like oh, got you, I got the visual, I got the sound effects. I'm into this story. Mm. What happened after the car went? <laughs> I never noticed that. Now I'm going to have to pay attention to you when you <laughs> narrate. Or, or yeah, whatever. or I change the pitch of my voice if I'm if I'm playing the girl part. <laughs> and oh, she said, I didn't like that. Speaking of which, <laughs> now that like you Mickey. just said that, I was yeah. talking to a guy friend of mine the other day, and he tried to do a girl voice, and he sounded just like you, like Mickey Mouse. I said, bro, you sound like Mickey Mouse. And he was like, yeah, I'm actually kind of scared how closely I sounded like Mickey Mouse. Yeah. <laughs> But that's how women sound in your head? <laughs> no, but that's as close as I can oh, get to no. making them sound I... like that. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, it's funny because um, uh, people have phone voices and their yes. phone voices are different than My work voice is very different. In-person voice, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. It's weird. My, some people have said that, and I didn't notice I did that. Sometimes when I answer my cell phone, when a friend calls, I answer it and I say, sup, like <laughs> instead of hello or whatever. And I was like, I don't say that. And they're like, yeah, you do. You just say, sup. I'm like. You're becoming self-aware. Aww. Aww. <laughs> It only took a hundred years. And the funny part is that you're arguing with them like, no, I don't. It's like, yeah. Man, well, I even you said that time. just now. I thought that was a trait that I came when we started the podcast. I thought it was just like. No. Okay. No. <laughs> Anyways. Unfortunately let's get, not. Let's get physical. Yeah. Let's get physical. Let's <laughs> so back on topic. Yes. <laughs> physical touch. Um, uh, that's That's the love language that we'll be discussing today. So. One of the things that comes up, right, and I think it's all based on that one book uh, by, was it named Gary Chapman? I think? Gary Chapman. Yeah, Gary Chapman. So is the, um, that when it comes to physical touch, it's not necessarily always have to be romantic or, you know, uh, erotic, if you will. Mm-hmm. Although that's part of it, you know, obviously it can lead to that. But I think it's, it's uh, what they've come to find out is, or, or what they've discovered is it's, it's, it's a lot more than that, mm. right? Um Physical touch, that's just how they feel closer and connected to you, mm-hmm. right? So just just touching you, holding hands, cuddling, especially watching TV. <laughs> I almost broke out another song just in the... <laughs> you said touching you, and I thought of that. I won't sing it, but I'm like, I'm sorry. 
You know, I do it with movies. I just, every time yeah. something, it reminds me of a movie and for you, it's songs. So it reminds me of a song. So I get it. I get it. We should it. be on Broadway. <laughs> We're in the wrong profession. You're doing jazz hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> you just did jazz hands. I just want to make sure that I saw that correctly. I did. Because that's a first for me. <laughs> you put me on blast. Now everybody knows. Um, but yeah, maybe we should go to, to Broadway and do a two-man show. Um, <laughs> that would be great. Uh, here's the thing. Oh my God. <laughs> can you can can? Can you can can? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, so uh, physical touch. <laughs> <laughs> my face hurts now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Physical touch. Physical touch. Yeah. Um, I think I've, I've dated quite a few women in my time that, that that was their primary love I, language. I feel like a majority of men, that's their number one. It, the men that I've come in contact with, it yeah. seems like that's their number one. Yeah. I, I can see that because for us, we're very... Um, What's the what's the word? <sighs> how can I describe how men are? I don't know. Like we need things, things, right? And so, and I'm not saying that a woman is a thing, but like I can touch it, you know, I can smell it. I can. <laughs> I can no, no, it's, stop there. It's, it's real. You know? I oh, can I see thought you were going to no, go no, through the no, senses. No, 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 no. I was just, you know, but you, you know, the the touching part, right? It becomes more real, right? It's not. It's. I don't know how to describe that. And then here's the other thing too, and, and, you know, it might get a little tricky once we get into this part, but there's something about having access to a person like that, that nobody mm. else has, mm. that is also very... It's exclusive club. It's very much so, right? Because it's like, I'm the only one that could touch you like that. Mm -hmm. Like nobody else can touch you like that. I'm not supposed to anymore. <laughs> And if somebody else is touching like that, that, we got a problem. But, but the, yeah, there's that part that you're exclusive, and I have access to you. Um, now, again, this is where things get a little tricky because if your partner doesn't have the same love language, they might not want to be touched, and they might feel uncomfortable when you touching them without asking for permission. Can I ask a question? Is that like the same lines of like how guys are territorial? Is that the same? Basically, what you just said of like. No one's allowed to do this thing but me, so it feels exclusive, but it's also oh, yeah, your it's property. Very, so, yeah. like, well, it comes with, like, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And women women do it, too, mind you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're territorial as much as they could tell you that they're not. <laughs> I think it's a human trait, personally, because yeah. I've heard a lot of, you know... I've heard women say, that's my man. It's like, oh, okay. Or even when you're a child, <laughs> yeah. it has to be because you try to, that's my toy. Yeah. You yeah. already have, like, this is yeah. my thing. It's Don't uniquely, mess with my thing. Yeah, it's, it's a human trait. I mean, it's, yeah. I'm sure it's in the animal kingdom too, but yeah. And so the same situation, right? It's like if a woman's um, primary love language is physical touch, like, again, she expects I can touch him whenever I want to. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what he's doing. It doesn't matter if he's sitting comfortably on a couch or... <laughs> If he's outside working on, you know, in the garage, I'm still going to go up and hug him and, and that's, that's just what I, what I can do. Right. Mm. So, but like I said, where, where things get a little tricky is if the other person, that's not, that's not how they. Yeah. Cause if they don't like it, then you don't feel like it's exclusive anymore. If every time that they try to come and hug you and you say no right. or whatever. Well, I mean, the exclusivity is part of it, but, but the other part is like, well, that's how I express it, but I can't do that because I have to ask for permission. Mm. So you have to learn how to navigate that after a while because yeah, it can be, it can be problematic if the other person is like, Hey, I don't like it when you just touch me out of the blue. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, well, I guess for those people it would have to be like, um, if you're with them for a while, you kind of know the times where it's acceptable and when it's not you based on trial and error, you, <laughs> you know, you like for, for the most part, like if I'm, doing chores and I'm disgusting, I'm sweaty, I'm a mopping. That's when that's, I want to hug you the most. That's, <laughs> that's exactly when I want to hug like, you the if most. I just that's when I'm when working I out. I don't want you to come and smell me. And it's like, don't smell me. I just came from the gym. Like I need yeah, to go. That's okay. That's, that's exactly when I want to <laughs> hug them. And that's exactly when I want to kiss them. That's when I, it's, it's, it's also, I don't know. How can I explain that? <laughs> It's it's also part exclusivity because mm -hmm. nobody else is going to be able to do that. Nobody else is going to be able to do that, right? Not not that anybody would, right? Like you said, they're stinky, whatever. But that's the whole point. It's like, no, it's fine. You have to like, really care about the person to try to hug on them after they worked out. Absolutely. And and what's 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 tough about it is that again, if 
if you're the type of person who doesn't want to be touched a lot all the time and that's when they're doing it, it becomes even more comfortable. Like you said, you're tired, you're sweaty, you're nasty, you're not feeling, you know, the most attractive at the moment. And mm -hmm. then somebody's over here trying to hug up and kiss on you. You're like, oh, yeah. Oh, get away. <laughs> get yeah. away. you don't mean to do that. But for a person that's physical touch, they can take it really hard. Yeah. Because it's a really, because that's how they, that's just how they navigate the world. Now you're, you're rejecting them. That's hard. It's kind of sad too, because when we do reject you in that scenario, it's just that you're, it's almost like you're trying to be courteous. Like I smell bad. I'm trying to be courteous. Right. Can you let me shower first or whatever? But I get it that they are like, oh, what is it, it about hurts. me? Yeah. It hurts. It hurts a lot. Um, but you can, you can kind of, kind of tell that. And so I did a little bit of research on the internet. Uh, Yay, on this internet. thing called the internet. Yay, internet. <laughs> And you know how the internet is all fact based, right? Yeah, a hundred percent facts. <laughs> so they can't they can't put it on there if it's not true. No, Remember absolutely. we used to think that if it was in a book it had to be real? Boy, were we wrong. <laughs> I mean we're kinda wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it but uh this was off an article that I got off the internet and they were giving you uh, what is it, five signs that physical touch is your love language. Okay. So we'll kind of go through them. So um the first one is you're comfortable with public displays of affection, even in front of a large group. Mm -hmm. That one I think is important. Do they break down what type of display? I would imagine because it's, it's affection could be hand holding, yeah. could be kissing on the cheek. I don't know if they want to get like all up in each other. <laughs> well, I'm just saying like, let's say that you had a girlfriend and she, well, maybe not for you. I have to speak maybe for a woman. If I had a boyfriend and they came to my job one day to eat lunch with me, mm -hmm. I don't really want to make out in front of the, like in the quad where like everybody can see me, all my bosses and everything. Like, yeah, that would make me uncomfortable. Mm. But if I was holding your hand, it's not a big deal. Well, okay. Like, that one I would understand because that's, that's a work environment and they have to see you a certain way. But let's just say that it's not work. Okay. What if I'm at a family function, I'm sitting on the couch and my boyfriend comes up to me, he starts making out with me with all my nieces and nephews just sitting around on the floor playing board games. That seems a little strange too, don't it? Uh, yes. Again, that's a different, <laughs> different setting. I think what they're talking about is more just in a group setting in general. But so so two things about that. Group of people you don't know. Group of people that you don't know okay. for the majority, right? So gotcha. yes, you want to be respectful. Respectful. Wow. <laughs> that was cute. Uh, respect, <laughs> wow. Okay. You want to be respectful of, uh, let's say again, let's say you were around your dad. You want to be making out with your boyfriend or even your husband, for that matter, in front of your dad. Your dad doesn't want to see that. Like, yeah. sorry, <laughs> sorry, they just don't want. It. It's not that they don't love you; they, yeah. they love you, but I, I just don't want to see that. Right? I, you're my daughter. It's just like when your parents make out when you're young. You're like, ew, like yeah, you don't well, want this. Your mom and yeah, dad, you don't yeah. want to see that. Well, and but you know, I, you say that, and at the same time, I think that that's good for kids. I know it's not. We're going to digress a little bit, but I think it's good when when kids see their parents be affectionate with. Of one course. Another. Like it, it reaffirms like it's it's okay to do this. This I, is fine. I think for the kids who grew up and they didn't have that, they seem to have issues with just um, not commitment, but like the whole sanctity of that. You know what I'm saying? They usually have issues with that because it's like, well, my parents didn't like each other and they were just roommates basically, let's say their whole lives. And that's well, all you saw. Yeah. And that that's the point. You don't know. You, yeah. you can make that assumption as a child. Maybe they were deeply in love with one another, but they just didn't show it affectionate. So you could, mm. I can see how you can make the connection of like, oh, they really didn't like each other. And right. then you ask them and they're like, yeah, we were madly in love. We just didn't show it out in public. Like yeah. we kept that very private and that was between us. So you never really know. But what, what doing it in public does is it says it's okay. Now, yeah. again, depending on how far you go. <laughs> But you know, I was watching a movie. So hey, here goes my here goes, here goes my get up. <laughs> it uh, but it was uh, it's a movie called Rob Roy, and I think they're in Ireland or whatever. And so um, it was a it was Liam Neeson, and I I can't remember the actress's name. She's she's oh man, I can't remember her name. Anyways, they had this small little house, probably the size of your living room, uh -huh. and everybody lived there. So it was, it was a man and wife, and they had like four kids. Uh -huh. They had bunk beds all over. And Ma you, and Pa were there. Well, they, they, they had everybody there. So you can't, and they have four kids, yeah. which means they can't, unless they're going to go outside in the woods, <laughs> to, to, you know what I mean? To have sex. Like they had to do it right there in front of everybody. Like that was just part of what it. What would you do if you were out in the woods doing that and let's say a bear came up? <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? 
terrible. We've really gotten off rails. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, the I, I, I don't know what, what you're I supposed think. to do when you're yeah. not run. I think you're supposed to not run. You're supposed to make loud noises with your stuff hanging out. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The bear doesn't Jazz care. Hands, maybe. The, the bear doesn't care. If anything, the bear's like, okay, you've taken all this clothes off, which I was just going to do anyways. Mm. Um, Thank you for unwrapping yes. my egg roll for me. <laughs> <laughs> my lunch, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I um, one time I was outside and i did that but just since we're already here um and i had uh do you know what a chigger is yes yeah and i had a whole bunch of them just eat up my 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 legs all my calves were just full of I'm but sure i was in the moment uh, you didn't feel it till later no i was in the moment i was like having fun was but that was just like it was it was bad i remember yeah. chigger medicine from what I, and this is like back from like the 80s it looked i remember i have this visual it looked like throw up in a jar that's what chigger medicine looked yeah. like to me yeah it's no fun though it is no, no I know. fun i lived down the country for a little while <sighs> i don't i live in the city and so this girl just happened to live out in the country and that that was uh i mean it was fun for sure but i don't know that i would ever want okay, to do so that okay so groups again. of people that you don't know <laughs> <laughs> yes. No yes. bears were there. Yes. No, um, so, yeah. So that's the first indicator that if they're okay with that mm. and, and showing public affection and, or whatever, uh, or being affectionate in public, then chances are they might be okay with it, right? Mm -hmm. Because they'll let you know pretty fast. And then the, the next one is um, you feel alone in relationship if you're not able to express or receive physical affection. Mm. So that one's harder to quantify, but if you're not, if they're not touching you at all, except for, you know, when you're being intimate, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you, cause you have to touch then. Um, <laughs> I can, I can kind of see how they would feel alone, right? Because yeah. they like maybe hugging and kissing a lot and you're not getting that. Yeah. So I can feel like, Hmm. Because showing like a little bit of physical affection is just, it's basically saying I care about you without saying it. It's just like, if I come up behind you, and I pat you on the back. I'm like, what's up, brother? I'm touching you to show you that, like, I care about you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, physical touch for me, that's one of the reasons, like, I feel bad uh, for the guys that work really, really hard, like like blue collared. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? These guys are that they are really working with their hands and they develop these calluses on their hands and fingers and stuff. I always feel bad for those guys. Because cause, <laughs> cause it, cause at some point they become desensitized. Yeah. And so even if they were... Um, let's say um, caressing a woman's back or whatever. Can't feel on, it. They either they don't feel it themselves, and or their fingers and hands might be too rough that it. You know what I mean? Aww, like that's sad. They <laughs> like don't it know might what be uncomfortable like to, for the woman to touch a soft woman. Yeah, well, and I've heard certain women like it when guys have those calluses on their hands. There's certain. I'm telling you, there's certain women that like. Like I, I remember, I used to know this. Like one the idea lady. of he's a manly man. I Is guess it? I don't know what what it's triggering for them, but I knew mm -hmm. that this there was this one lady, and she said she used to like it when uh, he had dirty hands. So he would like work <laughs> on cars and stuff. Okay, and he would have like oil and grease and stuff underneath his fingernails, and she'd like that. There was something about that that turned her on about a guy when he he she didn't like clean. What manicured. a weird fetish to have. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think there's certain women that like, you know, like muscular hands and strong yeah, hands I get and that. calloused But hands. the grease underneath your fingernails, that's kind of harder for me to relate to. I, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I guess if it's triggering, like he, this guy, he knows how to work with his hands, he's tools, he could fix this, which is very attractive. Like all those things. Sure. Like, yeah, I get it. The guy works with his hands. What are you going to do? <laughs> so that, the, anyways, that's, that's, that's the thing, but, um. Uh, the next one, if I can open up my iPad here, um, you like to get massages on a regular basis and love the occasional foot rub. I like that. Yeah. I like that. My so I, just real quick, I'm just going to say, um, I never really got a lot of foot rubs. And then I remember one girlfriend that I had, she would give me foot rubs and it made me uncomfortable at first. Uh -huh. Um, but then when she started giving them to me, you sit on the couch and you immediately put your feet up on her lap. No, 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 but <laughs> no, but <laughs> but what I will say is that I did like it. I started mm. to like it after a while, mm. and it's acquired yeah. taste. Is it? I don't. I don't, I don't like people touching my feet. Well, again, it, like a foot massage, though a foot massage is I don't like, great. 
I don't like people touching my feet. Even when I get a pedicure, it's very uncomfortable for me. Why? Because it tickles and all that, and I just don't like that. Well, that's why you got to get... I, I tickle too. I tickle really easy because I'm not used to it. But I'm telling you, once you get used to it, once you get used to it, it's very difficult to not get it I anymore. had a lot of pedicures in my life. I'm just saying that it's Yeah, but never... there are different people. I'm telling you, once you... And that's what I'm saying. Like, let's say you got with your, you, you have a partner, right? And mm. your partner is massaging your feet. And at first, it's tickly, this, that. And so he's going to learn too how to approach it either mm. you know slow it down don't don't graze certain way or whatever gotcha. there's certain spots and he'll figure it out and you will too you'll eventually get used to his touch more and more and more mm. and then as he starts you know let's say massaging your foot right and and, and hitting certain pain points you're going to be like oh i like that and he'll do it more and then before you know it as long as you guide him and like do that more or, or you know the ball or yeah. you know concentrate on the on the heel whatever I'm telling you, it becomes very addictive really, really yeah. fast. But my point being is that, again, it's physical touch. So maybe if physical touch isn't your primary, mm. I can see where you would be like, nah, I'm good. I was just thinking like one of the best parts, when because I was just thinking about the massages part, the best thing in a relationship is having someone sitting next to you and you have an itch that you can't reach and like, mm. oh, can you scratch? That's like the best yeah. to have someone there. Yeah, I love doing that. If I'm If we're sitting down and let's say she's, on the edge of the couch yeah. and I'm all the way back, leaning back, I'll just naturally start rubbing her back yeah. just because I know how good but that is. But I'm feels. just saying like a thing that you can't do, like I can't tell you how many times in the morning I can't zip up my dress from the back and I'm yeah. like looking around, there's no one here to help me. And I'm like, <sighs> and then what you have to like- What does one do in that situation? Well, you can take out, if you have like a wire hanger, you could- like unroll the top part, have a little hook, <laughs> hook it in. So you turn into MacGyver? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So you take a rubber band seat. Okay. <laughs> okay. You, can, you turn it into a hook. You could fasten something like that. Or what oh I usually God. have to do is a contortionist type thing to try to get my arms where they need to be. You know what we need to do? We need to invent something that takes I just care did of that. right there. Oh, no, you got the little hooky thing. I'm oh. talking about like we need to invent a gadget, maybe like a, a stick or something where uh -huh. you could put a hook hook on it yeah. and then it could go up or down or something. Like the wire hanger I just said. This is what it is. Well, no, it's but a I'm stick just saying, with like, a you hook. Could, you could just put it back there and then just hit like a button, a remote control, and it goes all the way up or something. I don't know. Oh, but okay. After all these years, I'm surprised that they haven't figured out how to solve that problem. Yeah. And it I don't even know why do you have zippers in the back in the first place anyways. Because where is it going to be? In the front. Like everybody, <laughs> my jacket is in the front. That's how I zip <laughs> it up. Zipper, no, they're not in the front of dresses. That would be weird. I know. Why would that be weird? I don't think because guys would think that would be weird. Because it's a constant distraction. The middle of your gown is this huge zipper. Why don't you just do it on the side then? They have some them. that are on the yeah, side. Yeah, those make more sense to me. Okay, than... but most dresses are a zip from the back. Mm, it's a design flaw. We're going <laughs> to... Well, I'm just saying certain things that, you know, they are physical technically, but having yeah. a partner, if you're like, oh, I can't reach... You're trying to scratch. You can't reach this part. Like, baby, scratch my back right here. And then you go up, lower, lower, you know. And then to me, like, ah. it's like putting... It's putting like... You had to tie your shoelaces in the back of your, of your foot. Like, why would you, <laughs> like, why would you do that? That just doesn't make any sense. Just so that you don't have laces in the front and aesthetically it just looks better. But I'm just like, no, that's how you mm. tie. Anyway, sorry. That's that's my grumpy old man. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> All right. That was uh, your old man voice. That was my old man voice. I don't understand. These uh, kids today <laughs> take out the trash. <laughs> Get off your phone. Um the next one is uh, you pride yourself at being a good hugger and you like sitting close to others. Everybody in my family has a, my father is like the best hugger. Yeah. Some guys, they just know exactly. They give the big bear hug. Yeah. And he's a big guy. He, yeah. Too, so. He's a big guy. But like, yeah, I just the right spot, the right amount of, you know, um, mm -hmm. squeeze or whatever. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Look, you can comfort, you can comfort sometimes a person a lot more by giving them a hug than by saying words. Yeah. Not saying words. Or like words a little too, like but... kind of pat on the back. You're like, it'll be all right. You're like, man, I need a hug, man. I'm sad. I always need a hug. Hugs are <laughs> always great. But because of that, and I will say this, this is also my biggest get up too, is um, I like to to have good personal hygiene for that matter. Mm. Because I figured I like to hug. So I don't want to hug somebody and either be stinky or sweaty or, you know, bad breath or any of that stuff. So I constantly make sure that... 
you know, I have good dental hygiene and Would you say the majority and, of people where physical touch is their number one love language, that they're probably that same sentiment of I wanting to so. be? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. If not, those people are going to be very lonely. You have the saddest <laughs> eyes just now. Because I feel bad because because if they're not, they're going to be very lonely because they crave the physical touch. Yeah. And in order to be, obviously, you have to get in close proximity. Maybe you get with another stinky person. The, well, oh, gosh. Two that would just be people. horrible. I don't think that would work. I think maybe you're right. That might drive it. Like yeah. you would definitely want to be courteous. If if I like to hug, again, I'm going to have to make sure that I smell good. You know, mm. I got just good personal hygiene in general. Right. Because if not, nobody's going to want to hug me and I'll find that out really, really fast. Like, nah, bro, just give me a handshake or a fist bump. I'm good. Yeah, you like pig pen. <laughs> You but got like a cloud even, of dirt. Exactly. Like right. that little, what, wasn't there a Charlie Brown? I said pig pen. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> I think that's his name. It goes well. Where to my Charlie Brown? You uh, are wearing shirt. your Charlie Brown shirt. <laughs> I told you. I told Jose that he looked like he was straight out of high school. He's got the white bottom sneakers on mm-hmm. with the with the Charlie Brown shirt, red and black. Uh huh. You look like you in high school, what? and you had a backpack when you came over. I'm telling you, and then if I were to put on my my. Um, uh, my Ray Bans, I'd look like a cholo all yeah. the way around, man. We got to button this top button. I right know, here. but it's it's uh, it's gonna get too hot, and <laughs> this is like sweater. This is knit, yeah. So it's, it's a short sleeve sweater. Whew, yeah, it's uh, but it, it, I feel good. Um, but yeah, I think personal hygiene, you definitely because even I noticed, even with my buddies, uh, and I, again, I've known them for thirty years. Not that it not that it matters, but because even guys that I've known for less, I still give them a hug. Mm. You know, we do that whole. The hand clap and then we bring it in for yeah. a hug. <laughs> and pat really hard on the back. Usually two to three. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's funny when the claps are off on the, each other's backs, you're both doing it and it's like click, 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 yeah. click, click. But yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's uh, Guys can do that. I, I, I'm sure it comes from a much more primal reason, but... Yeah. Maybe like wrestling, you know, like how bears when they're little and they're you they go up to their brother. And you know, just... it's, it's for for a guy, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna get really guyish right now, but guy time. Yeah, it's guy time. <laughs> uh, but it's it's it has to do with a bunch of things, right? So a I heard the other day, and I don't know if this is where it came from, but handshakes came from. Um, you would extend your hand and you would show them I don't have a weapon mm-hmm. on me. And then eventually they went in and they embraced and they would hug each other. And that's how you knew like, okay, he doesn't have uh, a, a weapon or whatever. We've got one of those swords that come out of your yeah, I mean, you could, but that's how you feel the arm. It's like, I, right, bro, I feel that dagger right there in your, in your forearm. Dagger. <laughs> that's how you get that <laughs> knife. I don't know. But, um, but that's where that came from. And I think when, when you go in for a hug, I think it also diffuses it you yeah. know what i mean because guys in general tend to size each other up especially mm. when you're younger right. you just size up a dude and it's like man can i take him in a fight <laughs> so weird uh, it is that's what i'm saying i'm getting really guy here right <laughs> oh but yeah you, i forgot it's guy you, time it's guy time it's okay. guy time okay, you gotta put your guy hat on okay <laughs> and I'll put, I'll put my girl hat the on the dunce hat on. that's the guy hat <laughs> But it's very like, could I take this dude? Even if you just, if we could both be in like three piece suits, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? In a convention, uh-huh. but I'm still going to, could I take this guy? If I had to take this guy, mm. could I take this guy? And a lot of warriors and soldiers, they do that uh, all the time, but they perfect it, right? Because they, they go a step further. Like, <laughs> like if I did have to take this guy, this is how I would do it, mm. right? Um, and some of us do that too. But when you bring it in, you kind of size them up. You see how big they are mm. and you can see how aggressive they are too. Cause mm. some, some guys are way more aggressive, but if you, but if, if it's a, you know, like a, and, and it could be aggressive too. Like if you haven't seen them for a long time, like come here, man. And you know, they give you a big giant hug. Like, but again, you're just sizing each other up. I, I got to stop you real quick. Cause I have a question. <laughs> You're looking at me intensely. I know because they're just bringing face. up a bunch of. So the other day, yeah, I meet this guy for the first time. I extend my hand out mm-hmm. to hand, shake his hand, mm-hmm. and the guy gives me the dead fish. Mm. Mm. What do <laughs> well, I do? Why are people? Why are people, men especially, not don't know how to shake hands with somebody? It's- why would he do this? If I'm like trying to shake his hand. Well, okay. Did it go in? What? Did it, I mean, what I mean, like, did he go in? Did he extend it with his hand down like that? I don't remember that part. All I know is that he gave me that dead fish handshake 
and I was where like it was barely where it was, it was barely? like it was like this. Hold on. It was like okay. that. Yeah. All he's trying to do, though. So it depends. <laughs> it depends. Right. And this is the part that you don't really know, because I, I encounter that with some of my some some of the men that I meet, too. <sighs> and you never know, because it could be that they're just for you because they're seeing you as a lady. They're yeah. just trying to be extra gentle and not trying to crush your hand, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because they are, they are taking that into consideration. Like, yeah, I can, I can hold your hand and like shake it really hard and firm. But you can put your hand on my hand and maybe don't shake it really firm, but at least cut my hand. Like at least, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, it, it could be that. He it's just been, so weird. I mean, you're he just talking been about nervous. Like, um, well, I don't know. It's happened a lot. I'm just saying that you're talking about like the guy, like, um, hey, man, it's good to see you. You hug in. You size them up that way because you're yeah. feeling how strong they are, whatever. But it's like the handshake I feel when two guys meet and they handshake. For the first time? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Same thing, right? It's like, how hard are you going to squeeze it, right? Well, sometimes it can turn into that. It, but you, in general, when I shake a guy's hand that I've never met before, I want to do it firm enough that it's not too whatever. Mm -hmm. But not too, not too aggressive either where, you know, like, hey, I'm telling you. You know what I like, though? If you, if I were to shake a hand with a woman, let's say I didn't like her or something. <laughs> yeah, no let's one, take a real life scenario there. <laughs> no one would know because all everyone else is seeing is a normal handshake. Yeah. But she knows. Not, I'm not saying I do. I'm just saying it's mm -hmm. interesting how you can be aggressive and be like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. without saying anything and nobody notices. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, women, y'all are in a totally different, y'all are in a totally different, y'all tend to uh, uh, compliment each other when you don't like each other. <laughs> oh, I don't do that. I don't give false compliments. No. I mean, maybe not, but I mean. I, I, That's I'm, a personal <laughs> principle of mine. I'm not going to tell you I like this thing when I don't like it. I don't, that's a, me personally. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But, um, but for guys, yeah, you can usually size up a dude pretty, pretty good. And it, it, uh, one guy, I shook his hand and, um, uh, he did that part where you, your fin your fingers, not interlocked, but they, they do that couple together. Okay. If they, you know what I mean? Like you give the handshake and then you're about to let go. But oh then you yeah. Bring it back when you in. do the snap. Yeah. <laughs> And so I did that. I did that with him. But the problem is he had super long nails Ooh. and they were hard. So when he went into my palm, I could feel him digging into my <gasps> palm. With what those, if he cut it him to a point? It, my, it <laughs> felt like it. It felt like they were like Dee. they were weapons almost. <laughs> was it a vampire? No, like no, it was just a regular a dude. But I was just like, man, that hurt. Like it hurt my palm. Like it went, it went deep into my palm. Yeah. Had the little indentation. <laughs> I was like, this. You got a permanent scar. Yeah, it's like dude. four little fingers. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, I think, uh, cause you know, when boys are growing up, uh, well, at least for me, maybe not so much nowadays, but we used to get in fights all the time. Mm. And that's how you would size a guy up, you know? Right. And, and sometimes it really, didn't really matter who won. Yeah, mutual respect. Like it was you mutual came respect. To the fight. Yeah, and you also you also learned if this dude fought fair mm -hmm. or if he fought dirty. Mm -hmm. And if he fought dirty, then you know typically, his character. Yeah, like watch out for that. That dude pulls hair. Because <laughs> 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 if you did that, if you did that growing up in a fight, if you pulled the dude's hair, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. even if you won, even if you won. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you came out victorious, all they're gonna think is that that dude okay, pulls hair. Okay, what if he hair. takes the top of your hair, pulls it up, and then punches you while holding your That's hair? That's different. Oh, okay. But I'm just saying, like he's losing the fight, and then yeah. he pulls your hair uh -huh. to like to like get out of it or whatever. Or kicks you in the groin. Is that another one? That's another one, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, that's a that's a that's a once you get older, like these are what rules. about poking in the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't typically want to do that. And and, and so the, the when you're a kid, it that's those are the rules. Right. When you get older, it doesn't matter. When you're an adult, I'm gonna do whatever I can to win. I could care less. About <laughs> I could care. You know what I'm you're saying? You're not on the play yard well, anymore. Well, because because when you're an adult, you realize like um, I'm outmatched. He's gonna be taller, stronger, weighs more than me. So we're not. You know, it's not an equal match. I'm gonna mm. have to do what I have to do to win. I don't care because you already have a huge advantage over me. Mm. And especially if I'm not trying to fight and you're trying to fight me, yeah. My job then is to take you down. I don't care yeah. if I pull your hair or, or kick you in the groin. It, I'm going to do whatever I can because this is a street fight and I'm not going to sit here and, you know, get pummeled by you just because, hey, I don't fight dirty kind of thing. Mm. But but it does, when you're growing up, you, you can tell whether or not that person is. And so, again, there's something, 
I'll give you this one too. I'll just say because again, I remember movies a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you remember in Silence of the Lambs, the <laughs> greatest course. love story of all Best time? Best movie ever. That was like a mentor and a mentee falling in love, but not falling in love kind of thing. And Me I think cute. the books were more yeah. aligned to that too, by the way. But anyways, um, if you remember the last time that they saw each other when he was in jail and he was giving her the paintings or whatever, mm -hmm. he stroked her, her finger. Mm -hmm. And like, again. Like a G. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing about it is, the thing about it is that's why you do it because it's that physical touch. Mm -hmm. It. it it, and I'm not saying it's for all men, but it does kind of solidify it. It's like, okay, now I'm touching you. Because yeah. like, let's say you go on a date and you're, you're meeting somebody. Maybe you hug on the first, I'm a hugger. So typically when I meet somebody at a restaurant, or whatever, I'll go in for a hug. Yeah. But if they're not comfortable with that, I understand that too. Right. Like I'm not going to force it on them. But then you have that whole thing of you're going to go the entire night. And especially if you're really jiving, you know, it's like, oh, can I go in for a kiss? Can I, mm. you know what I mean? But until you get that physical, unless you, until you get to touch them, that's when you kind of really know like, oh, okay. I had that, that thing person. happen to me. It was the same guy on our first date. We'd never seen each other. He comes in. I put my hand out. I'm a handshake girl. I put my hand out. He sees that, but then he does this. He puts his arms out. So he goes in for a hug. And I'm mm. like, eh. and I kind of did that uncomfortable, whatever. So we already knew. Then later on in the night, he goes in for a kiss when there was no vibe mm. and I did this like a, mm, I tried mm. to back away and he still went so two times in one night it's like Bro. I know that look yeah I've had that with girlfriends sometimes <laughs> god it's horrible I'm just saying it's like horrible. come on man like it's too I just met you it's yeah. too much yeah obviously his love language was physical, physical touch. touch or maybe he just wanted to touch you I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but, you can't really tell right because the physical touch yeah they they tend to be that way. As far as going in for the kiss, that's not typically, mm. you know what I mean? That's more. But wouldn't a guy want to be sure? Like that's when you kind of lean in a little bit to see. He just went like full force, but still too slow where he should have stopped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He kind of gets a little vibe. He just... didn't get the social cues that he should have. Yeah. Right. But that comes with time. That's what I'm saying. Like with little kids, you learn these things. And then when you be, when you get older, that's when you like, okay, you've gone through the same thing. So, you know, the social, mm, like mm. be cool. Don't act a fool. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we're not kids anymore. We're yeah. adults now. We know that, you know, like you got to be cool, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think for that guy, he might've just been pervy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I always gauge it because for me, I can usually tell whenever I go in for a hug, cause I always go in for a hug. Um, if they're just not receptive to it, mm. then chances are I won't try again for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, and especially if I'm getting a vibe that she really, really doesn't like me, then yeah, it's like, okay, cool. No, no harm, no foul. It kind of makes me think too, since we've been through a couple of these love languages, it feels like when you start dating someone, this feels like a really good topic to talk about early on. What's your love language? How do you interpret it? How do you want to be shown that? I'm not saying maybe on the first date, but I'm just saying if you kind of like somebody. Yeah. I think these are really good topics to find should, out. So yeah. you don't have that situation where if you did go in for the hug and she's like, eh, and then you're like, okay, I'm not going to try for a long time. Maybe it was just a first date thing for her. Yeah. And then you don't try for several dates and then you kind of lose interest because you're like, eh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard, especially if that's your primary and the other person is not. Yeah. If, if the other person, and I would say that, the love language, you kind of, um, for me, I kind of look like everybody has them mm. a, a, to a certain extent. It's just some are more primary than others. And I would even go so far as to say that sometimes your love language can adjust over time or depending the situation that you're in That's at true. that time, right? Um, it really does depend. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I actually thought about that the other day when we did quality time because it was like, I remember being younger and for whatever, I don't know what changed, but it's like back then I felt like I wanted my partner to be around more mm -hmm. as I've gotten older. It's like, eh, maybe it's okay <laughs> if I don't have to see you every day. I <laughs> have a theory that you're turning into a man <laughs> as you get older, but it's just me. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. I could I've be been wrong. fooling you this whole time. I mean, you know. <laughs> You know, I just, I think you're morphing into a guy the older you get. So just by the time you're 50, you're going to be just uh -huh. a grumpy old. Yeah. <laughs> you're not even going to wear dresses anymore. Maybe. You're going to be like, I'm done. So be like, this is a podcast from a male and male perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a lot of, you know, quote unquote male tendencies, let's say. But, um, 
but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think because um, even if somebody like, for instance, is is a physical touch, right? Maybe they they and and I would imagine even those guys from time to time, me included, sometimes just don't want to be touched or nothing. Yeah. You know, just want to be. Sometimes, yeah, you just want to be alone. You just want to be whatever. Although a, a hug is always, you know, welcome. But I, I've turned it into my normal. I hug and kiss my kids all the time. Yeah. Um, I remember one time back in the day, I went to the movies with a boyfriend of mine. And it was like a movie that I had been waiting so long to see. And I was super excited. I won't name what it was because it'll super age me. But I remember being in there and it'd come to like this pivotal point in the movie. And he was like trying to like be lovey with me. Mm, and I kind of like... <laughs> I was kind of like, babe, like I'm watching, like I was really like, this was a big deal. It's like, can you just for this short period of time? And I'm like, super, I'm not even leaning back in the chair. I'm up like this. And he's like, and I'm like, dude, like later. <laughs> it's horrible. It's absolutely. But I'm just saying to your point, there are certain times where it's like, you just want to be whatever that thing is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I would say, I would say the other thing too about, and you know, um, and maybe it applies to the other love languages too, but physical touch can become addictive. Because mm. again, every physical—I mean, every love language—everybody has a little bit of that. Right. Gift giving, um, you know, time together, mm-hmm. the, the um, physical touch, the the what was the other words of affirmation. Mm. So it can be, become really addictive. That's what I'm saying. If you if you have a partner that does that all the time, mm. and even just out of habit, you're like, stop, but secretly you like it yeah. or even the massage thing if you get a foot rub once a week you kind of get accustomed to it and then yeah. what if they're like i don't want to do that anymore and you're like oh man well you know imagine it's even harder right let's say that you're you're not let's say you're not a, a touchy-feely person so mm-hmm. physical touch like obviously you like it but it's minimal that you mm-hmm. like to do that but your partner isn't and does that to you all the time yeah and maybe it annoys you but you tolerate it because you're like well you know mm-hmm. she loves me or he loves me like i i understand and then something happens, let's say after a year or two, you guys break up. You're going to miss that mm. a lot. You're going to miss all the things that used to annoy you. Yes. And yeah. especially, and then what's funny is then you'll start thinking like, man, he used to touch me and hug me. And so in your next relationship, if they're not doing that, you're going to feel like, mm, I yeah. kind of like that. <laughs> like, that's why I'm saying like it can change over time what you like. I think everybody likes all of those languages, but some just seem to be you know, more primary or your default, let's say. Yeah. But you take that away. I'm telling you, it's very, and I hear it from people that let's say, um, because we were creatures of habit, people that say like, oh, I've, you know, since I've been married to my husband, uh, we slept in the same bed for five years. And then one day he had to go do a trip, a, a business trip. Uh-huh. And that was the first time that we had ever slept yeah. apart. Like That's they don't weird. know how to handle it. <laughs> like, what do I do? Like I'm used yeah. to that person, no matter what, always coming home and, and laying in bed or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when they take away that physical touch, it sucks. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it I think sucks. it can change over time. I just remember too, like I remember being younger and not mind snuggling, but you know me, Jose, I don't like to snuggle. Like that, I don't, I must be the only woman, I don't know, but I don't like snuggling. And I get it, it's a big deal for guys. So I try to accommodate every once in a while. <laughs> I'm like, I'll do it. I just really don't like snuggling. I don't know where that stems from. I don't know either because that's insane to me. That's just <laughs> insane. Sorry, I know we're not supposed to use the word insane, but it's insane to me. Who doesn't like to cuddle? Who? I guess the, I, you, but. <laughs> I would say maybe maybe it's just more of like when I, I told you I have sleeping problems, right? So it's more of like when I'm trying to go to bed, I just want to be left alone because I have to be in a comfortable well, position. Well, bed is yes, but snuggling is different. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. But like every time I sit on the couch, I don't want to snuggle all the time. Mm, that's horrible. That's absolutely horrible. I know. Horrible. That's absolutely <laughs> horrible. Because, you know, one of the things that, um, so, you know, there's another list of of um, how to please a, a a partner whose love language is physical touch and they have like mm. 10 different. This episode may take a turn. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. But there's <laughs> there's one in here that. I didn't know I liked until a couple of of the people that I dated did it. Uh-huh. And then I was like, I really like that. Do you um, want to say what it sure, was? Sure, no. Oh. <laughs> it's not sexual. <laughs> God, did you think? Well, not- it sounded like it was going to be. 
<laughs> You're like, I didn't know I loved it so much. Let me tell you <laughs> what I'd like. <laughs> no, uh, so um, so I have long hair, uh-huh. right? And putting my head on their laps while they mm. like stroke my hair mm-hmm. and just rub my head, I really, really like that. There's some because I don't think you can be any more vulnerable than that, right? She has her hands on my head. <laughs> <So I'm> like, <laughs> She's got you in the chokeholds. I mean, there's there's other <laughs> vulnerable spots that you could put, but yeah. but that is it, there's something comforting about that. It's very soothing because we very, all very got soothing. that. Well, women like it too, all, by the way. Oh no, women love it. Here's yeah. the thing: we love it. Or let me speak for myself because my mother did that to us when we were little. Yeah. So it's a soothing, comforting thing. But I will tell you, most guys do not reciprocate that same thing. So mm-hmm. we want our heads to be rubbed and our hair mm-hmm. to be lightly played with, or maybe you lightly brush it. Mm-hmm. That feels so good. But yeah. guys don't do it. I've asked. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> really? They don't want to do it. I used it. to do it for because they don't do it right. They do it too hard, or they're like this. No, no. I used to. <laughs> I used to do it for my. Uh, my ex-wife, she used to get migraines and stuff. We had yeah. to close all the shades and stuff. And sometimes yeah. I could do that and it would it would help out. Not always. But, I do it to yeah. my sister sometimes. like Because well, my, <clears throat> my sister and I, when we were growing up, we were very close. We were kind of similar in age. And so I remember brushing my sister's hair, you yeah. know, when we were younger. So like every once in a while, with like a family, like something gathering, there's like a hairbrush. I'll kind of like, oh, you want me to brush your hair? Yeah. And then like, yeah. she's like, feels oh, good. it feels so good. Oh, dude. It feels fantastic. Trust me. I know I have long hair. <laughs> yeah. so. I'm just saying we women like it too, but we don't get it from men very often. Yeah. You should ask because I, I would imagine, uh, well, yeah. It, but it, for women, I think it's a natural, it's almost like a motherly thing that we yeah. all have in us yeah. because I do well, you don't have sausage thing. fingers either. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have sausage fingers. Oh, you I thought you meant like, a women had sausage no, fingers. No, you guys don't. Women yeah. don't have sausage. You have more tender, you know, gentle fingers running through your hair. It's yeah. different than like a couple of sausages <laughs> through your scalp and you're like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> Take okay. those, uh, what are they, the Eckerd, <laughs> whatever those sausages that they have. But anyways, um, um, yeah, I love that. And when, yeah. when, and, and I thought I didn't like that because I didn't like people playing with my hair and mm-hmm. touching it. But, uh, this one, this one lady that I dated, she didn't force me into it, but she was insistent. So and I was like, like it. and I was like, fine, let me do it. And then she did it. And I was like, oh. Man, that we're just goes TV to show you got to be open to new things because sure, you don't know what you're gonna for like. For sure, for sure. And so, yeah. And then after that, um, uh, somebody else I dated did it, and I was like, oh man, this yeah. is pretty good. But I think, like you said, it's I think it's in- instinctual for mm. you guys. Yeah. Where we would have to work, we would have to work at it. Anytime <laughs> my, you know, whoever I'm with, if it's a situation where their head is like here, yeah, we're yeah. rubbing our fingers through your hair, yeah. your neck, sides of your face. Mm. You're getting all up in it. <laughs> Jeez. I get all up in there. Well, and you say that, but I, I, I would also say one of my favorite things, and this part I do know, is when a woman um, um, puts her uh, hands on my face, couples my, my face. Mm. There's something about that that I absolutely love. I don't know what it is. That it's, seems like another childhood thing. If like your mommy, you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> say more, please. I'm just saying. <laughs> I like where this is going. Your mother, when you were little. <laughs> nah, my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just a very soothing, sweet thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get mm-hmm. it. Again, it's very vulnerable. Again, you just, you know. you. I, yeah, because she could be like. Pop. Yeah, she could. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but but I do like it when women do that. When um, Not every woman will do that, but I do like it when that happens. I don't know why, but it just feels really, really good. Um, but anyway, so the list. Okay. So one of them is um, uh, walking and holding hands. Okay. They like that. So that's mm-hmm. that's one way you can please them. Uh, giving hugs. That's, you know, we talked about that and obviously mm-hmm. that goes on. Um, whenever your partner is feeling blue, holding them closely. Aww. So yeah, that does. I don't know. It, it, yeah. It, <laughs> it helps a lot. You know, I was, talking to, I was talking to a friend of mine and we were talking about uh, anxiety. I know this is an anxiety, but we're talking about different things and techniques that you can use to try to help with anxiety. We're like breathing mm-hmm. hard. And one of the things that I've tried that I didn't think I was going to like, and it was the same girl, by the way, she, she, she showed me a lot, was a weighted blanket. I didn't think I was going to like that because I like to toss and turn yeah. and this, that, and the other. But when I got the weighted blanket... 
I can't tell you how many times I'm almost put the trigger on buying one of those because it's the same thing. It's like, I feel like I know I would like it, but it's just kind of like, eh. You know, it's like one of those things. uh, The only hard part about having a weighted blanket is the storage. Because they're heavy, <laughs> they're weighted. Oh. <laughs> there is, so you don't know where to put them, and where you wherever you do put them, like it's going to squash whatever's underneath it. So you can't put it in with other stuff. How many it's, pounds is it uh, in total? Yeah, you would have to look at it, but I think the one that I have uh, might be like forty or fifty pounds, maybe. Dang. Maybe, maybe. So it, it's, it's like a large dog laying on top of you. Yeah, basically, yeah. So, but it, but it's comforting because yeah. you know you can get out, but you you try to wiggle and you can't. Like it's because it, it, it holds you snug and secure. Yeah. And I remember well, I had two, I have two kids, right? Two sons. And one of the, one of the uh, babies, the oldest one, we would wrap them up mm-hmm. so that they show you a wrapping technique when, it, when they're infant infants. Yeah. And it soothes them, right? Yeah. Because it, it's like a little Chipotle burrito. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly <laughs> like a burrito, right? And so my oldest son, we would wrap him up and he would love it. It would soothe him and you would go to sleep or, you know, he would calm himself down. The older one, not so much. Mm. The older one, we would wrap him up and immediately he'd start trying to break out. And yeah. he would, he'd start crying and he hated it, did not like mm. that at all. And as they- I wonder grew, how he feels about physical touch. Well, you know, <laughs> you say that and when he was little, he didn't particularly care for it too much. Yeah. Um, but I did it a lot. And over time, he got used to it. And not only did he get used to it, maybe this was bad parenting, by the way. <laughs> you forced <laughs> the love language on your son. <laughs> Basically, but what's funny now is that He's figured it out. And so I still think that he does like giving hugs and stuff like that, but it's very minimal. Yeah. And most of the time when he does it now, it's just to appease me. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So he knows that I like getting hugs and this, that. So he'll just come over and give me a hug. Um, but sometimes he forgets. And when he remembers, that's when he'll usually do Aww. it. But again, it's not, I don't think it's his primary. That's sweet. To be honest with you. Yeah. So but he's gotten used to it, right? And, and I don't know, I, like I said, you know, maybe I screwed him up. <laughs> you know, I had to go to therapy and mm. talk about that. But if that's the worst that I did, then so be it. Well, it's kind of the fine. same thing with like, even if you let your kids sleep in the bed with you a lot when they're growing up. Yeah. I think from what I hear from parents, it's almost like the parents like it more. So they let it continue because they like that feeling of their child sleeping next to them. It's yeah. almost like you, you feel more, prote- you don't think that, okay, they're in the room. You don't know what's going on. Right, right, right. right yeah, yeah. So... It's a it, it, it's in anxiety induced for sure. Mm. When my kids now that they're getting older and they stay out of the house, it was tough for me to fall asleep knowing that they were not in the house. Yeah, it was. That's tough. what all parents say. It, it really is because and and I have two boys, mind yeah. you. So for the most part, you know, but I still I worry about them getting in trouble or doing something stupid or just being at the wrong place at the wrong time, whatever. I have something slightly like that when I'm dating someone, if they drop me off or whatever, it's like, I want to know you made it home safe. Yeah. And if I don't know you, I like, I won't go to bed until I know you are home safe. Mm. I don't know why I do that, but it's just like, I don't want to worry. So it's just like, okay, they're safe. And now I can go to bed. <laughs> I do that even though they're, I don't have any children. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Translates. Yeah. Except for me. when I text you, you're like, dude, I'm asleep. Leave me <laughs> Do you know what time it is? Just letting you know I got home safe. Yeah, uh, whatever, dude. Thank you for being a friend. Okay. Let me know in the it's morning. 1 a.m. Jeez. <laughs> if I didn't hear you from you for a few days, then I knew you I'm didn't just make saying, it. But even like, it just, just makes me feel good. I, I know that's not a really good trait because um, if they forget or something that I'm up worrying yeah. and it's like, I don't need to be. So yeah. like, I think I talked to my mom about this. She was like, you probably should stop doing that because then you're, you're creating anxiety for yourself. Yeah. Just say when you leave, it's like, okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow, yeah. but I can't, I haven't been able to switch over yeah, yet. It's, it's, it's hard. I remember I've had people worry about me, which is always sweet to me mm-hmm. because it's sometimes it's women, right? And when a woman is worried about you, like, oh, I hope you get home safe, for me anyways, me, Aww. I always find that very, very sweet because chances are... Your face I'm, is all red right now. No, no, because cause, <laughs> cause I always, it always, I don't know You're why. Blushing. Am I? Yes. But I don't know why, but because, and because I'm thinking of a few times where, oh, okay. where women have done that and mm. they've cared about it. And the, the reason why it's so funny to me is because... Like, I've done a lot of stuff in my time. <laughs> I was a alien. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've done a lot of bad, bad stuff. I grew up 
in a very poor neighborhood. And so I've done a lot of stuff. Mm. <laughs> I've seen a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of horrible things. And for, for these people to be worried about me, I find that sweet because I'm yeah. just like, yeah, I can, you know, I can take care of myself. Let's just put it that way. I'm not, that's not to say that I couldn't get hurt. Obviously yeah. I still can. Like that's always a possibility. For women, it makes us feel good because it's like, um, it's almost like you're trying to protect me. Yeah. But you're not there. But it still feels like you're protecting well, me. Well, it's it's sweet that you're yeah. even thinking about it. You know, with all the stuff that you have to do, like I I I'll, I should be able to take care of myself, right? I know how to take <laughs> care of myself. Yeah. But the fact that you're worried about me just shows me that you care about me. Yeah, Does that makes sense. Yeah, I, that that's a very sweet sweet okay. thing. You know what I mean? Like like, like John Wick's girlfriend. You know, wouldn't say, "Call me when you get there, baby." <laughs> he's John Wick. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's he's gonna be okay, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's always it's always sweet, and that's why you don't know how to take it. You're like, mm. do you really think I'm gonna get hurt <laughs> from here? Like, do you not think so? That some guys might take it that way. Yeah, they'll be know? like, well, I just drove ten miles. It's not that far. It's like that's not the point. Right, Anything right, could happen right. in ten miles. And it's the sentiment. It's the sentiment. Yeah. Like you said, it. Even if something like that were to happen, there's really not much you can do, right? You, it, we're just doing it because a, you're worried about us, and you just want to have that comfort so you can go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Knowing that your partner's at home and that's completely reasonable. Yeah. So the guys that think like, well, you think I can handle myself? <laughs> like, those, and that's what those guys sound like. What are you doing? Yeah. This? <laughs> Man of many voices today. <laughs> I mean, I can go into my what I like and stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you what I like. <laughs> but uh, but anyways, all right, we'll go. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, this is where I was telling you comb your love. One's locks, uh -huh. locks of hair, and then cuddling up, which you don't like doing. <laughs> <sighs> I hope you don't get with a guy that's love language is physical touch because he's in trouble. Yeah. Um, initiate intimacy. So the person that whose physical touch is their love language mm. likes it with other people. And really, one of the things that I've uh, that I keep on coming up with is that. You can kind of tell based on how your partner is acting and the things that they do, you can kind of figure out their love. I mean, you can have a conversation about it too. Like, let's say you talk to your partner, you're like, hey, like you said, you know, it's early on, like just, just so that, you know, now we're getting, we've been dating three months and we're getting mm -hmm. a little more, like, I want to know, you know, what you like and what you don't like. They might say one thing, but they're going to show you, if they show you the exact same thing, then great, they're on point. Mm. But they can say something and then show it to you differently. And you're going to have to figure that one out too. Do you think some of that is purposely lying or not? Well, maybe not purposely, but like, you know how you think you're a certain way, but it's, it's the way you want to be, not necessarily the mm -hmm. way you are. Exactly so right. like if someone's saying, this is my love language for whatever, either it's subconscious or not, whatever. But like, yeah, like you said, you're going to be able to find out really quickly based on their actions, what mm -hmm. that thing is. Mm -hmm. You really but will. Why would you really, they lie about it though? It's not that they lie about it. Again, it's it's it could be a couple of different things. Um, and if they are lying, I don't think it's intentional. Mm. It could be a situation where, like I was telling you before, their previous partner was physical touch. Mm -hmm. So then they started missing their their partner and thought, gotcha. "Oh, I'm physical touch," but in reality, and then they get it and they're like, "No, wait, I don't like this." Well, it's not so much that they don't like it, but then when you get with them, you notice that they're not that affectionate. Yeah. So it's like, oh. Okay, because they'll let you know if it's physical touch, they're going to start like, you know, trying to get closer to you and try to touch you a lot more. You're going to know really, really fast yeah. when, when it's physical touch. If it's two people like that, that physical touch is in their thing and they can both sit on a couch, you know, with, you know, with plenty of room between them and they're perfectly fine. Great. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. But, um, but the other one, if it's physical touch, trust me, they're going to inch their way closer and yeah. they're going to want to get closer to you and more and more and more and more. And so when they do that, if the other person initiates intimacy, that's really going to trigger. So, so again, back to that other one where they thought it was physical touch, but then she constantly gives her partner gifts and mm -hmm. that's how she does it. It's like, hey, I saw this and I noticed you didn't have one in your house, got it for you. And I noticed you said you wanted this the other day, you saw this tie, I got it for you. And she does that a lot, mm -hmm. but doesn't come in make it a point to 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 touch you or whatever. Sounds like sleepy hollow in here, <laughs> don't it? <laughs> the wind is kicking up. I think I touched the nerve of one of the ghosts in your <laughs> in your apartment. In your it house. just made me a sleepy so, hollow oh this whole time. God. Okay, goodness. So you're used to this? Yeah. You're used to the spirits talking to you? 
okay, spirits, um, I, I'm here in peace. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Whatever Robbie did. Um, but yeah, yeah. So anyways, that's, uh, <laughs> um, they, they would just tell you, yeah. like, they're going to let you know. I think one thing that is, that the lang- love languages for me has done is that if you really pay attention to people and really pay attention to your partner, they're going to tell you exactly how they want to be loved. Right. Now, whether or not you're able to accommodate, that's a different story. Yeah. But they will tell you how they want to be loved. Yeah. So I would say if you start dating someone and, and let's say you've gone on like five dates and they haven't made any advances to touch you in any type of way. Yeah. Yeah. You can already assume it's like, okay, this person's not touchy. Feel. I would say after the second, like on the second date, you're probably trying to at least hold their hand. Yeah. You're trying to test out the physical part yeah. to see if you have that connection. That's a, that's another, that's another podcast in and of itself. Cause, <laughs> cause you know what I've learned? That, um, some women, they like to hold hands mm-hmm. and that's, a, there's a subset of, of that too, but we'll just stop at that. And then there's other, there's other women that like to hold on to your arm. Mm. And I've, I've experienced both and it's very, it's very interesting because we'll start walking parallel, obviously. Yeah. And one of two things will happen. Either she'll reach out and grab my hand and we'll hold hands or she'll reach out and grab my arm and then I'll do the whole, I want to say my something that, this may sound totally weird, but go with me on it. I have that same thing, but mine's situational. In a fun, lighter type of thing, Mm -hmm. I'll hold hands. If it's like dinner or something, a little bit, whatever, that's when I put it on their arm. Yeah. So it's like based on like where we're going or like if we're just walking around downtown, like, yeah, I'm just holding your hand. I'm not holding you like this. It's almost like a, like I'm the lady for the night, right? And that's what a lady would yeah. do. But there's a default. I think uh, you, you, what you're talking about is, yeah, like once you've been with somebody for a long time and you've gauged the situation, but you will, or at least I've noticed that certain women will go one way or the other. Mm. They either want to hold hands, it doesn't matter, uh. or they want to be on your arm. Hmm. I'm good either way. When the first time, the first time when I did the arm thing, that threw me off. Cause I was like, oh, okay. Cause you have to adjust how you walk. Obviously you have to adjust the way you walk when mm. you're holding hands too. But the subset of holding hands is they're, I like holding hands, but the problem is, or not, not, not a problem, but there's certain challenges that you have with hand holding. Uh-huh. A, you don't know if you're going to do the interlocking finger thing. Mm. <laughs> and if they're really knuckly, that might be a problem. And then, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You know, they got uh-huh. knuckles. And, um, and then the other one is if your hands start getting sweaty, like what uh-huh. do you do in that situation? Cause you, you obviously don't want to have. You know, and you don't want to be the first one to let go because you don't want to be rude. Right. That's what happens. Like, yeah. oh God, I want to yeah. let go. So sometimes like, the arm thing works because you don't yeah. have that. Like again, the only time you ever have to worry about is if she wants to go look at something that you don't. Yeah. Then you, ha- you know, she would have to break off or whatever. But I anyways, you, in your dating experience, would you say that women's for physical touch for a woman is important, or do you find it's not so much? In my experience, yes. it's very important. Okay. It's very very important. Um, it's very, very important. Yeah. It's, 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 um, I like light pieces of physical touch, not all the time. And I'm sure everyone will be able to understand that as a woman, sometimes your man can't keep his hands off you all the time and it can be a little too much, Mm -hmm. but like the little things, putting your hand on the small of my back, helping me walk up the stairs, Mm -hmm. you know, holding my hand, the sweet little things. Yeah. I really like those things. Sure you do. (laughs) <laughs> just not cuddling <laughs> we're not going to get into that right now but the last one and then we'll end it on this one was dancing together and I do like it because I'm not a very good dancer uh-huh. but I love I love dancing remember, I like I like close up dancing yeah do you remember back in the like, day when like women would go for a guy because he was a good dancer they still do that's the best if you know how to dance oh maybe I just haven't you, met any men that know how to dance dude if you know how to dance you can just about get any girl you want and it's is that a tip to the fellows go take it, a dancing it class it really is I tell my kids all the time learn how to dance <laughs> learn how to dance because there is nothing more because a and again I know it's not politically correct to say uh-huh. this all the time nowadays but the man has to lead Mm. There's something about that that in the woman follows and uh, obviously they have to be in sync. Mm. So there's something that's m- way more dynamic in a dance mm. than 
it's it's a whole nother thing when you're dancing with another person. I'm not talking about like you're dancing over there and I'm over here and we're just going up and down and like, hey, it's kind of cool. Junior I'm high talk, style, yeah, the I'm guys over there. Like either a certain genre or a certain dance or just up close and just dancing together. Yeah. There is something you will find out each other's rhythm. Mm-hmm. You will find out what each other likes. You it, it becomes less awkward at a certain point. Like it, it's as close to like besides physical intimacy, that's about as close as you can What do you guys like more being dance, the woman's hands are around your neck, both of them, like up here, or is it one up here and then one below? I think they, I, I, I don't know, I can't speak for women. but No, I'm asking for men. Do oh. men like it when women have their arms up here or when they have one on top of the shoulder and one underneath? No, I like it when they're they're up on top. Okay, it's fine. But it it depends. It's situational, right? So it depends on what they're what they're comfortable with. But it seems like when you're around the neck, you could get closer. Feels like you could. You, I don't know. You could. It's just it's 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 a because dance is you. There's a rhythm to it. Mm. There's so many things going on. You have to be on the same page because if you're not, it looks awkward. Mm. You misstep. You, you you're not in sync. Yeah. It's just bad. But if you know and you can adapt to that woman and, mm. and learn how to do that, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Mm. Remember Saturday Night Fever? Yeah. John Travolta? <laughs> like that was his thing. Like he just happened to be handsome. But what made him more attractive to women was that he knew how to dance. Like, I think even there, if John Travolta didn't know how to dance, well, I think women would I still. <laughs> that's, that's, that's for another show. But uh, this one's been <laughs> really great. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I know we got off the topic a little bit, but like. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. It was a good show and, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll continue exploring them. But yeah, I had a good time with this one. Me too. Did you like it? Yes. All right. Um, I guess until until next time then. Next week. All right. Bye. Bye.